Good evening. This is Tony Perkins, and I've got a secret. I've got a secret, brought to you tonight by Bristol Myers, makers of Mufflin, the modern pain remedy that gives you fast pain relief without stomach discomfort. Bristol Myers brings you America's number one panel show, I've Got a Secret, starring Gary Moore. Thank you so much. Good evening and welcome to what I can almost positively promise you will be a, an interesting and unique edition of I've Got a Secret. But first, let's meet our panel, and happily we are all together tonight. There's Bill Cullen, and next to Bill there's Betsy Palmer, and Henry Morgan, and Bess Meyerson. That's the mic. Now, Pony, you ready to play the game? Yes, ready, yes, sir. Yes, All right. Now, when we have our first contestant, then please, if you'll come in. <laughs> now, these three people, I will, of course, first ask to identify themselves by. What is your name in your your hometown, please? Mary Emma Neves from Dallas, Texas. This is Miss Neves, N-E-A-V-E-S. Now, the gentleman from the army. Lieutenant Charles Ottstadt. Lieutenant Ottstadt. Your name, sir? Ensign Allison Thompson. Ensign Thompson. All right. Now, while they have two secrets, in other words, a two-part secret, both parts are interrelated. The first part belongs to the two gentlemen standing behind me, and the other part to Miss Neves. However, they are related, the secrets. So, gentlemen, if you at one at a time will whisper your secrets to me, and I'll show them to the audience at home. Let's start with you, Ensign. Lieutenant? Yeah. And now, Miss Neves, if you will, please. <laughs> Panel, the overall clue concerns something they did. We'll start the questioning, I guess, with Henry. Let's start with you, Henry. Yeah. Uh, you are, well, <laughs> you didn't do it together, correct? Partly. Well, partly, yeah, yes. Exactly. Partly together. Yes. When it was done, then, were you gentlemen in uniform? Partly. Hardly no, in uniform. No, we have to say this. That there, here's where we come to the division. Their secret was accomplished in uniform. Miss Neve's part of the secret was she was not in uniform, nor were they in uniform at the time. Oh, boy. Huh? Now, did you, uh... Uh... Did... <laughs> Miss Neves, were you ever in uniform? No. <laughs> were you ever a teacher? Yes. Uh -huh. All right, $20 down, $60 to go. May go, please, to Very pass. good, Henry. Uh, Miss Neves, were you a teacher of these two handsome gentlemen at one time? Yes. While they were in service? No. Before. Uh, is it important to, uh, for us to know exactly when, at what particular grade? Is no, that in that the is, secret? That's immaterial, and you have already gotten Miss Neves' part of the I see. Of the, of now, did you? All right, uh, Miss Neves was a teacher of the two gentlemen. Uh, Lieutenant, uh, did did you get involved in any kind of mischief while Miss Neves was teaching you? I don't remember. <laughs> He's taking the fifth. Forty dollars down, forty dollars to go, and we go to Bill Cullen, please. Gary, let's cut out the small talk. I got ten owls I got to do tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's an inside joke. Uh, may I give me not, give me time because I want to do like someone does on another show. May I see both of the gentlemen's, uh, all four of the gentlemen's hands, please? Gentlemen, raise like, your hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and. Uh, now, I was looking for rings. Obviously, Miss Neves was their teacher, and obviously, because they're an ensign and lieutenant and recently graduated, they both stood first in their class at West Point and Annapolis. <laughs> Chester, can't we get somebody a little dumber for the show? 
Comes on here, knocks these things off. The yes, today is a very important day in the lives of these two gentlemen. Lieutenant Ostotz graduated from West Point this morning. Ensign Thompson also graduated this morning from Annapolis. And what makes today so memorable for these men is that both of them finished top number one man in their class, each of them. And Miss Neves, of course, is justifiably proud of the fact that she taught both of them in high school. Uh, I have the name of it here. Uh, where was this? Uh, Highland Park High School in Dallas. Now, you must be terribly gratified to see two young men of yours turn out this way. Uh, we really are. When they were in your class, was there any indication that they would go on and do as well as they did? <laughs> oh, yes. They've all been, always been outstanding students. She says yes, and they say no. Huh? <laughs> Now, is there ever a chance that a student who is, let's say, mediocre at best in a class will suddenly find his feet when he goes to college or to one of the academies and becomes the number one student? Is that ever possible? I would say that it's possible, but hardly probable. Well, there go the hopes of 98% of the parents in the United States today. <laughs> Dear me. Now, there's an added reason, reason for congratulations. Lieutenant Ostott has held top honors in his class for all four years. And in the entire history of the Academy, he is only the second man uh, to accomplish this. The other one was a fellow by the name of Douglas, Douglas A. MacArthur. Mac 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 MacArthur. MacArthur. I knew I'd heard of him somewhere. Douglas MacArthur, yes. Lieutenant Ostant, Ensign Thompson, Congratulations to both of you, of course, and we'd like to wish you good luck on what are obviously going to be brilliant careers. Thank you, Miss Neves. Your brilliance has already been attained to these young gentlemen. Thanks for being with us. Your money and your Bristol-Myers gift package will be waiting backstage. You may be welcome, please, our next contestant. Now then, sir, asking an obvious question, what do you have in that folder? That's my secret. That is your secret. Well, then perhaps we'd better let our audience in. Pardon, Chester? Huh? If I do something... Huh? His name? Gary Moore. I didn't even ask you what your name is. <laughs> We've been chatting backstage. I already knew it. I assumed everybody else did. My name is Lamb. L-A-M-B. And you are from, sir? I'm from England. You're from England? Yes. Now, if you will whisper your secret to me, we'll find out what is in the folder. And here we go. Well, that doesn't strike me as being too unusual. There must be more. <laughs> Panel, Mr. Lamb's secret concerns naturally something he has. And uh, le having left off with uh, Bill, we'll start with Betsy, please. Mr. Lamb, um, what you, are, are you related by any chance to the other Mr. Lamb, who is quite famous in England? <laughs> Eli? Charles, Charles you mean? Lamb. That's a lie. Yes, he was a distant relative. You mean the he one was? who wrote the essays? Yes. Does That's... he have any? Does this have anything to do with what you have in your portfolio, then? Nothing at all. No. <laughs> does it have anything to do that would be more typically English than, um, say, American? That's in your portfolio? No, I don't think so. Is it? Are they drawings rather than something that is written? Would it be pictorial instead of um, uh, uh, verbal something or other? It's pictorial rather than verbal, yes. Yes. It uh, has something... It also has some writing involved. I've some involved. words I've involved. never known them speak. No? <laughs> no. Well, would this be something original? Yes. Would it... Uh, what, will you qualify the, or, or explain the question? Something original. Well, what say, for instance, would it be something that um, maybe a original folio of um, William Shakespeare or... Uh, um, in that sense. In that sense, the answer is yes. Uh, $20 down, $60 to go. We go, please, to Henry Morgan. Did you say it's mainly pictorial? Or was I out of the room? It's mainly pictorial. Yes. Is it in color? It's in... Uh, when you say is it in color, you mean as opposed to black and white? I'm not opposed to black and white. <laughs> uh, As it happens, it's, this is black and white, isn't it? It is black and white, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> too, many, too many knobs on that other thing. Um, what are we doing here? Oh, is it in color? Yeah. 
Did, Ed, is it the work of one man? No. Is it a page from um, a collection of these? No, it's not a page from a collection. Would this hang in a museum at any time? In a museum? You mean as pure art? Would no, it it's never been in a museum. Is it a, let me say this, that so as not to lead you completely down the garden path, while it is pictorial, we must not assume that it is also not functional, because its main purpose is functional. Yes. Uh, all right, I got another question because there was a laugh Who's here. I sure I do. Bill, Bill owes me one from uh, some week. <laughs> is this a drawing of an invention? Drawing of an invention? No. Oh, okay. no. Now we go to Bess Myers. Uh, Mr. Lamb. It, it, it's sorry. the production of an invention. Yes, but the drawing is not, not of a, an invention. Not the drawing of an invention. Yes. So now please go to Bess. Uh, Mr. Lamb, is this um, very old? Yes, it's, uh, I think, very old. Uh -huh. uh, does it involve a hobby of yours? It doesn't involve a hobby of mine. Or no. your profession. Are, is this involved with your profession? With a profession? With yes. my profession? Uh, slightly. Um, do you collect these things? No. No. Bless your I, time's I, running out. Do you have no. an idea? I sense that you I have an idea that you weren't. I thought Pardon? a stamp of some kind. Yes, it is a stamp of some kind. It is a stamp, and it's old, an old stamp? From the Boston Tea Party? And maybe it's just the... Now, Mr. Written. Lamb's secret is that in that folder he has postage stamps worth more than half a million dollars. Just what I was going to say. Oh, I was going to say, yes, yes. <laughs> And if you, if you wonder why some stamps should, could possibly attain that value, it's because they are the world's very first postage stamps. When were they printed, Mr. Lamb? 1840. 1840. Would you uh, step out center? I don't like to even handle them. They're so valuable. I'd just like you to have you... You did this afternoon. I did this afternoon, but it frightened me, so I'd much sooner have you do it. Now, look, we, uh, right back here so the camera three can get a oh. shot at it. These were one-cent stamps. They were called penny blacks, for obvious reasons. One penny stamps, not one cent. One penny stamps, begging your pardon. Now, uh, this was in 1840 uh, in England. Now... At what date did we, the United States, get stamps? 1847. 1847. Now, as I look at them, they look not too unlike a uh, sheet of our stamps, but uh, the obvious question is, how did they hold stamps on in those days? Even the first sheet of stamps was printed, and it had an adhesive back. Had so stick them on the them back, on, huh? Stick them on, yeah. Well, they haven't improved that either, have they? No. Or the taste of them. Uh, is there any other difference? Yes. These, you will notice are not perforated. You couldn't tear them off. The man who sold them to you had to cut them off with scissors or the butcher's knife or whatever it was. So you went and you asked for two stamps. He had to literally just cut two of them off. And the other difference is, the camera I don't think can see this, nor can the panel, each stamp has a code letter in each corner, which was to prevent forgery. Ah. Even though they were only a penny each. A each a different So code. you are looking at a sheet of history, really. Mr. Lamb? Thank you very much for being with us. I want to say, first of all, and this is an utterly unsolicited plug, Mr. Lamb is here in connection with the British Exposition, Exhibition, which is at the Coliseum, and Frank Heller, our director, got a sneak preview of it, and he says that, bar none, it is the most exciting exhibit the Coliseum has ever had. It is not confined to stamps. It's all British arts, cultures, crafts, industrial side of their life, and so forth. So, Mr. Lamb, I expect to see you then. I hope to see you there. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Good night. Good night. I never questioned Bill? No. Bill, didn't I question you? No, you, you, they finished. You, they guessed it Bill before we got there. No, no, that's exactly what I was going to say. I was going to say, this man has a bunch of stamps in here. <laughs> sure you are. I sure. Thought, <laughs> well, I I'll tell you, Bill, if you're angry, you can go outside and vent your ire because you have to go out to the soundproof room if you don't mind. Do not, do not take your blindfolds. It won't be... Now it is time for us to meet our special guest for tonight. This truly is one of the great, talented young people of Broadway and Hollywood... He will soon be seen in the new Alfred Hitchcock movie thriller, Psycho, for Paramount Pictures. Here is Tony Perkins. <laughs> it's pretty obvious that you've got friends out there. Yes, it's nice. Yeah. You know, I think Mr. Lamb would make a good panelist. 
Yes. Good at uh, dodging questions. Yes, that he is indeed. Uh, Tony, is everything set uh, next door? Yes, I have just been there. The food is all laid out beautifully. The champagne is ice cold. It looks wonderful. Champagne and everything, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, let me explain to the audience what we're talking about. Uh, next week will mark the eighth anniversary of I've Got a Secret, a very happy occasion for us. And for the eight years that we've been on the air, I've Got a Secret has always originated from this theater that we're in right now, the dear old Mansfield Theater on West 47th Street. Uh, it's been a very happy home for us. But unfortunately, tonight's program will be the last I've Got a Secret program to originate from this theater. Next week, not by choice, we will be in a new theater. The man's field will be converted to go back to the showing of legitimate Broadway shows. So not only do we have to say goodbye to our much-loved theater tonight, but unhappily we have to say goodbye to our truly magnificent stage crew who have been with us so long and who will stay on here at the man's field. And Tony has been helping me to arrange a farewell party for our stage crew at the restaurant next door right after the show. Well, listen, Gary, you know, I'm, I'm very happy to help out, but, but why do we have to wait until we're off the air? Well, you know how it is. Uh, the stage crew has to wait until we've finished the show so they can clear all the scenery off and clean the stage up. Yes, but, but since it's uh, their last night with the show, don't you think uh, you and I could, could do that for them? The two of us? Strike the sets and everything? Well, sure, I don't see why not. Well, I guess we could. All right, then. Let's bring the panel back in. Not quite yet. Not quite yet. And uh, we'll have them blindfolded, and I can clear the stage, and as soon as we're done, we can go next door with the whole stage crew, get a head start, and that'll give you a secret for the panel to guess. The if secret will be that I'll be, you and I'll be leaving here for next door, right? If we work fast, maybe we can get over there before the panel finishes with their questions. All right, uh, let's, uh, let's get the kids back in, please, if you will. And this should be great joy. I want to thank your management of your picture, Psycho. They had an ad in the paper this morning about Psycho because they didn't finish the full word psychopath and said it's what's up front that counts. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Now, panel, I'm going to have to ask you reluctantly to put on your blindfolds, keep them on throughout the entire game. You'll find it's well worth the effort. Now, the clue to Tony's secret concerns something that he will be doing. And uh, in as much as we neglected Bill in the last one, let's start with... Bill Collins, something that he will be doing. You'll be putting a half a million dollars worth of stamps into an envelope which you have, Tony. Is that right? Uh, no, not uh, exactly. He went over there. Uh, Tony, the thing you're doing has to do with your moving around stage. Is that right? Yes, I am moving around. Further over there now. Uh, Tony, every question I ask, you seem to go further away. Hello there. No, I'm approaching you now. You're back now. Okay. Obliquely. Uh, you're, you're obviously doing something physical. Is it going to uh, pertain to... Are you going to do anything, Tony, to us, those of us on the panel? Well, it's not uh, planned. He's getting further away. No. Yeah. That's uh, $20 down, $60 to go, and so we yes, go, please, to Betsy Palmer. Just said the door's open. I can. I can feel a draft. Um... Surely. Uh, <coughs> right back. Can't you see it all on the behind of you? I beg your pardon? Are you uh, going to... Um, let's see. Does this have anything to do that we're not going to be in this studio anymore after tonight, which is very sad? Yes. Yes, yes. you might say it would. It does. Be He's taken say, over. I don't mean to blow the whole bit so soon, but, There's well, I won't say anything more then. Go so right ahead, Betsy. Really? Well, I was wondering, are you going to move us? Oh, you can't be moving us bodily into the new theater because there wouldn't be time. You sure? Sure what, it's sure? It's cold in here now. Tony, what are you... Uh, Tony, are you taking our set and going to move it away? Tony, are you here? <laughs> Tony? Tony. Tony! I'm here. Where are you? All right, that's $40 down and $40 to go, and we go, please, to Henry Morton. But he never answered. Oh, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> what was the question, Beth, that you did... Well, I've an... forgotten now. <laughs> good question. Uh, does this have to do uh, with uh, moving the physical appurtenances of this studio and throwing them into the gutter or something of that sort? No, not really. Well, is it true that you do have that large exterior door open to the yes, street? Yes, the door is open. And you are moving something through it, aren't you? Uh, no. I, I, did you say I'm moving something through it? Well, you didn't open it just to watch the traffic, did you? No, but... Uh, They're bringing the new studio to us. Wouldn't that be funny? We're not moving anything through it. Whoop. There. Are you pleased with what you're doing? <laughs> Beg your pardon? Are you happy in your work? <laughs> Very exceedingly. <laughs> I just assumed... All right, that's $60 down, $20 to go. Best Myerson, you're wrong. I'll be hungry. 
Henry, I want to know what you just as soon want. <laughs> well, I just as soon go home if you want to know. <laughs> oh, I think that's what was. Tony? Yes. Oh, hi there. I'm Not still here. in an echo chamber. Tony, are, are we going to move too tonight? I mean, will we have to help you go over to the new studio and set up? He's probably halfway Hello down there. the block now himself. <laughs> yeah, I think he's gone. Well, hey, Phil, what why don't we, we just do? go? No, why he's probably outside. We could just. Let's all go. We'll kill ourselves if we get up in the blind. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's here. I'm Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Hey, they're all gone. Or at least we are. We take our blind. Oh, come on. Henry, you can't. Come on. You can't go anywhere. Hello there. Hello there. Oh, Gary's back. Hello there. Hello there. back, but he's on a. Hello there. Say hello, Tony. Say hello there. You're in a truck. You're on a horn. You're on a speaker. You're in a truck. You're gone you're somewhere. In a you're, you're coming you're back on. by electronic control. Bye. You're way out. Last time they did this, they burned the theater. <laughs> I told you we should have left. You'd have nobody to talk to. There we are. There we are with blindfolds on. And, Is the uh, audience probably... still here? Have they gone? How much time have we got are to you go here? Yet? Are they gone? Yeah. Yeah. Panel, get your blindfolds off. I hope so because. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. No, we can't hear you. Guess where we are? We're, tr- we're next door in our little home away from home, Del Soma's restaurant. We're having wow. a party. We're having a party for the stagehands. Come on over. Oh, all right. All right. Come on over and see you. Right on. There they come. Take the first door you come to, young ladies. That's it. Come on in. Come on in. Doesn't make a difference which door you come in, so long as you come in. It's only a half-hour show, you know. (laughs) There they are. Hello, Betsy. Hello, Bill. Hello, Bess. Hello, Tondaleo. Welcome to our party for the stagehands, who have been so great to us over a period. Yes, yes, been sitting here. Come on down and join us. Come on down here. Come on down here where the food is. Somebody's standing on my cable. Here we go. What? Watch my cable, Tony. I think I'm getting you all tangled up in it. Henry, Betsy, Beth, come on down. Hi, friend. Hello, how are you? Hi, Mr. Lamb. Our contestants are here, our cast is here, our production crew is here, and most importantly of all, our stage crew is here. That's the important part of this show. And our host, Mr. Cardinal, over there, who's made everything so beautiful for us. Thank you so much. Tony, you want to, do you want to pour, Tony? Well, it's uh, being done very well here. I'd like to pour. I'd like to get in under the act yes, sir, here. Can come and get on the mic. Where is there, um, pardon me. I can't find a stagehand. <laughs> no, they're there. Huh? One stagehand and chair. Well, that's it. And look all around you. There are oh, freeloaders. I know these things. <laughs> <laughs> no freeloading about this. May I say? May I, may I say, gentlemen, in closing, not to get terribly sentimental about this, but honestly, the eight years with you guys has been a great lesson to us, and anywhere we go, any stage crew has got a tough job measuring up to you guys. I really mean it. Eight Very long nice. years. Yeah. <laughs> well, the funny was uh, uh, some degree. <laughs> and now that we're back here where the food and the, bu- uh, the uh, bouillon is, uh, I expect that everyone will relax and we'll have ourselves a good time. Uh, it's a little in advance, I guess. Uh, one week in advance to thank you for a great eight years. Eight great years. We'll talk to you about that next week. Tony, my friend, I want to thank you ever so much for coming over and helping to set this up. This is just about the nicest show I've ever been on. Do you do things like this every week? I mean, oh, every night! <laughs> <laughs> I think it's be better than good Green one. Willow, isn't it? You must come and be with us all the time. <laughs> there. Yes. Well, friends, and so until next week at this same time, regretfully from a different theater, however, you'll not know that because it'll look the same on the stage. This is something that is terribly personal with us. But we like you to know the people to whom we are grateful. And so until next week at the same time, speaking for Tony Perkins and all the gang, this is Gary Moore saying bye-bye. Be very kind to each other, will you? And <laughs> bye out there. Chris Myers is down by Cameo. Be sure to watch Crystal Myers' show, Producer's Choice, on another network.
be your local listings for time and station. This is John Cannon speaking. Good evening. This is Tony Perkins, and I've got a secret. I've got a secret, brought to you tonight by Bristol Myers, makers of Muffrin, the modern pain remedy that gives you fast pain relief without stomach discomfort. Bristol Myers brings you America's number one panel show, I've Got a Secret, starring Gary Moore. Thank you so much. Good evening and welcome to what I can almost positively promise you will be a, an interesting and unique edition of I've Got a Secret. But first, let's meet our panel, and happily we are all together tonight. There's Bill Cullen, and next to Bill there's Betsy Palmer, and Henry Morgan, and Bess Meyerson. That's the mic. Now, finally, you ready to play the game? Yes, ready to go, Keith. Yes, All right, now, we have our first contestant, then, please, if you'll come in. <laughs> now, these three people I will, of course, first ask to identify themselves by. What is your name in your, your hometown, please? Mary Emma Neves from Dallas, Texas. This is Miss Neves, N-E-A-V-E-S. Now, the gentleman from the Army... Lieutenant Charles Ottstadt. Lieutenant Ottstadt. Your name, sir? Ensign Allison Thompson. Ensign Thompson. All right. Now, while they have two secrets, in other words, a two-part secret, both parts are interrelated. The first part belongs to the two gentlemen standing behind me, and the other part to Miss Neves. However, they are related, the secrets. So, gentlemen, if you at one at a time will whisper your secrets to me, and I'll show them to the audience at home. Let's start with you, Ensign. And now, Miss Neves, if you will, please. 